The Quiet Place Part 2 just premiered in theaters and oh, shh, it's really good. Hello everyone and welcome to the Dill Pickle Movie Network. I am Dylan Randazzo and I am here to talk about A Quiet Place Part 2. Just hit theaters, it's already getting a lot of great buzz. Uh, you know, for a, a long year of movie delays and not being able to go to a theater, it's nice that this is the, the real movie to open the summer blockbuster season. I think a lot of people are going to flood to the theaters to see this as their first movie back after this whole year uh, and pandemic. And I do think it's a good one to really welcome fans back to the movies because it is an experience tailor-made for the cinema. The word quiet is in the title and I do think this movie as well as the first does play around with sound very well. The sound design has always been something that is so unique uh, to this movie. The choice of when to add score, when not to have score, when to leave things silent, when to put noises, and then when those noises do come, uh, that level of tension and fear that just immediately jolts through you as soon as you hear a noise because you know what's happening next. <laughs> I remember the theatrical experience from seeing the first Quiet Place in theaters. I did not know what to expect, but I think it's the only time ever in a movie theater where I just heard everyone start to eat their popcorn and drink their drinks, and as soon as the movie started, everyone just stopped, and no one made a sound for the next two hours, and it was really, really awesome to see, and I think this movie does the same thing. It makes you afraid to make any sort of noise, peep, any sort of, you know, uh, opening of candy wrappers. It's really nice. So if you're someone who kind of gets a little bit disturbed or annoyed at some of the people around you making some noise in the theater, I think this movie, as well as the first, uh, does a good job about getting the audience completely on board and completely silent from the get-go. Having seen the first film, I do think some of the actual horror elements in this film are a little bit more predictable. You know, you kind of know what to expect when you hear a loud noise. But just because we've kind of seen it before in the first film doesn't mean it's not welcome here. You know, the thrills are still thrilling. The fright is still there. Um, you know, it's just not as fresh and unique as the first film, so it's a little bit more predictable. But I did like the movie and the element of fear. And like I said, it is perfect for this theatrical experience where you're sitting with a bunch of people all taking in the same thing and all being able to really react together and feel the energy from one another uh, as this movie is affecting you. A Quiet Place Part 2 picks up right where the first one left off. Following a lengthy prologue, uh, which takes you back to day one of this whole outbreak uh, with these monsters and this monster invasion. One of the problems I did have with the movie is that I did want them to dive a little bit more into these origins of these monsters, and they do explain a little bit about how they got here, uh, but not necessarily why. And I do hope if there is a third movie, because uh, let's be honest, this movie sets up a third movie perfectly. It does end on another uh, cliffhanger-esque ending, even more so than the first one. Uh, so I do think this opens the door for a sequel, uh, and I do hope in the sequel they do explain a little bit more of the origin uh, of the monsters. Not necessarily too much origin story is needed, but I do want a little bit more just to know what the deal is with these monsters that make it different from any other movie monster, aside from the fact that they're just attracted to sound uh, and blind to sight. Like I mentioned, this movie does have a prologue, and it is a really, really cool prologue. I I think this shows just how much John Krasinski has grown as a director from the first film to this film. He does a lot of cool stuff inside the vehicles themselves, driving forwards, driving backwards. Uh, you see little shots of the monsters here and there, but the monsters are never really at the center of the frame. They're always kind of like hidden in a corner and then you have to kind of find it yourself. It's almost like a Where's Waldo where you, when you see the monster, you're like, oh shit, there it is. I do think it's a really, really fascinating display of direction. And I do think him not being in this film as much uh, as the first one uh, does help because he gets to focus a lot more on what he's doing behind the camera rather than in front of the camera uh, this time around. The last movie was more about John Krasinski and Emily Blunt's characters, but I think this movie is really about the kids, Millicent Simmons and Noah Jupe, uh, who are having two great careers. I mean, Millicent Simmons is in both these movies. She was in a movie called Wonderstruck. Uh, Noah Jupe has been in Ford vs. Ferrari, Honey Boy. He was just in The Undoing on HBO. Like, they're getting a lot of work, and they're uh, really deserving of it because they are two really extremely great, gifted, talented young actors uh, who I do think will have very lengthy and very successful careers ahead of them. I mean, the movie really does follow their two stories, and, and sometimes movies, when they kind of send each character on their own separate path, sometimes more plot lines are given priority over other ones, but I think this one does a good job about making each character feel like they have a complete arc in the story. I do have to mention John Krasinski's direction again, because these characters do go on separate journeys and separate arcs, and John Krasinski and the editing team really do a good job about making these moments feel connected, even though the 
the actual contents of their scenes and their arcs and their stories aren't necessarily beat for beat connected, they find a way to connect them with some really interesting montages and cuts back and forth. There's a climax in this movie that happens right about at the start of the last act of the film uh, that is really, really powerful, uh, seeing the parallels between uh, two different storylines. And then at the very end as well, in the final moments, uh, seeing the parallels as well. Uh, it's really, really impressive to see how they're able to really tie all of the different storylines together because, you know, with a sequel, you want to build the world. You want to expand the world. And I think this movie does a good job about doing so while not going too far outside the box, while not necessarily exceeding the boundaries that this particular franchise set in the first movie. There are some new cast members added to the bunch as well. Killian Murphy is extremely well cast and a real shining star in this movie. He really is the male lead of this movie. His character really grows over the course of the film, and it's great to see a character that you don't know anything about and immediately feel interest and, and in intrigue with from the very first moments they're on screen. <laughs> The other big name actor to join the cast is Digimon Hansu, and I have to admit, I wasn't necessarily a fan of what they did with his character. I think he brings a lot of interesting, uh, like I said, world expansion uh, of this franchise and, and the lore of this franchise and where they can go from here with the franchise. I think he introduces a lot of those interesting concepts, uh, but him as a character, I feel like uh, they almost just kind of wanted to throw another big name star in there just to add more people uh, to make this uh, more star heavy movie but I don't necessarily love the direction they went with his character and think they could have given him a little bit more to do uh, rather than just kind of uh, explaining this new element to the story uh, that we are introduced to about two-thirds of the way through. Most people had finally given up hope. Like I said, you've seen a lot of the horror before, but it does work again here. Uh, I think John Krasinski's direction here is not as much focused on the horror as it is the character development, and I really like that. I think the character development here is so strong, you get really great arcs from Millicent Simmons and Noah Jube, like I said, but also Killian Murphy, also Emily Blunt. You know, these adult roles also have great arcs, and it's just great to see all of them come together in a very cohesive whole and end in a pretty good spot. Like I said, the cliffhanger, some are going to like it, some are going to hate it. The first one had a little bit more of a strict ending, but uh, this movie, I think, does uh, really just kind of stop in the middle of the action and really makes you want what's coming next. I think it's a smart decision on John Krasinski and uh, the entire filmmaking crew uh, to end it there uh, because now people want to see a third one. Paramount has to greenlight a third one to finish the story because so many people need to know what happens next and as frustrating as it may be as a fan who has to now wait a few years for a third movie, hoping there is one, uh, I do think it's a smart decision on John Krasinski and the writers uh, to leave that open-ended. They knew what they had with the first one. They knew it work successfully. Uh, they probably knew watching through the second one when they edited it all together that this was going to be good too. So they probably had an inkling that there was going to be a third one around the corner and there very well may be uh, and I hope there is uh, because this really does set up some interesting stuff to come. So that's my review of A Quiet Place Part 2. What did you think of the movie? Were you as scared as you were the first time? Did you enjoy these characters' arcs moving forward? What did you think about the cliffhanger? Let me know in the comments below. If you are going to spoil any of the huge events of the movie, please uh, note in your comments spoilers just so other people reading the comments aren't spoiled because it is a real great movie that you want to go into uh, without spoilers. I do think the summer blockbuster season is off to a really, really good start uh, and I can't wait to see what's next down the line for summer 2021. It's great to have people coming back to the theaters, especially for a crowd pleaser like this. Thank you all so much for watching.